Welcome to Liechtenstein. How do you get to Liechtenstein? First, find Liechtenstein. The country is tiny, just 15.6 miles long and 3.7 miles wide. With a magnifying glass and a good map of Europe, a search of the central area soon reveals this sparkling gem of a country. So, how do you get there? You can arrive by plane, by train, or by car. From Zurich, it's only 56 miles. It's approximately 450 miles from both Paris and Vienna. To drive on the super highways in Switzerland and Austria requires payment of a road toll, called a vignette. There are no customs formalities on the Liechtenstein Swiss frontier. Only on the frontier with the Republic of Austria are there such formalities where the federal state of Vorarlberg borders the northern frontier of Liechtenstein. Any foreign visitor can stay in Liechtenstein for a period of three months as a tourist. A foreign national is not allowed to take up employment or residence without a permit from the Aliens Registration Office. Liechtenstein has, since the end of the Second World War, and particularly in the last 40 years, experienced an economic and cultural development unsurpassed in relation to the size of the country by any other Western nation. From being an agrarian state, Liechtenstein has developed into being one of the world's most highly industrialized countries. The high extent of the industrialization is not immediately apparent to the visitor, because industrial buildings and areas, with their clean and light appearance, blend in harmoniously with surrounding orchards, meadows, and forests. No ugly high chimneys or billows of smoke intrude on the beauty of the countryside. Liechtenstein has approximately 31,000 inhabitants today, whereas in 1950 there were only 13,700. The people of Liechtenstein are of Germanic origin and speak a dialect of German which has regional differences from one community to the next. Apart from German, their mother tongue, most people in Liechtenstein also speak English and French. The people of Liechtenstein are mostly Roman Catholics. After belonging to the Diocese of Schur since ancient times, Liechtenstein was made an archdiocese on December 21st, 1997. The climate of the country can, in spite of the Alpine situation, be described as mild. It is strongly influenced by the Fulne, a wind from the south. Winter temperatures rarely sink below negative 15 degrees Celsius, and summer temperatures range from 20 to 28 degrees Celsius. Despite its small size, Liechtenstein is a very diverse country. There are two political regions, the upper, formerly Vaduz, and the lower, formerly Schellenberg. There are 11 autonomous communities, making for a melange of attractions for all tastes. Museums, banks, boutiques, restaurants, historical sites, vineyards, and sports facilities are varied and charming. The capital city of Vaduz has about 5,000 inhabitants and is the place of residence of the sovereign family and the seat of the government. Vaduz, the largest community in Liechtenstein, is the home of the prince. With his family, he lives in a beautiful castle above the town. The people of Liechtenstein combine the best aspects of tradition and modern liberality, making this a small land of big hearts. The government reflects the people as it should. A constitution divides power between the prince and the people, embracing the best aspects of monarchy and democracy in a unique and exciting governmental form. The form of government in the Principality of Liechtenstein is that of a male-line monarchy. 
According to the Constitution of October 5, 1921, the governmental power is shared between the prince and the people. There are a large number of specialized shops in the Principality of Liechtenstein. The Principality is also known for its postage stamps, hand-painted pottery, handicrafts made from Balsner marble, and wines. The wines of Liechtenstein are an advertisement for the skill of the growers, cellar masters, and winemakers. What is Liechtenstein cuisine like today? Since most of Liechtenstein's local dishes, such as hafala, stem from our grandmother's time, they seldom appear on a restaurant menu today. Another dish from the past, the kastnoffel, tiny dumplings with cheese, is still served in some restaurants. Recipes of some of the most popular Liechtenstein dishes are included in the gastronomy guide. In the front of the Church of St. Florin, on the right-hand side, is the oratorium of the princely family. The patron of the parish, St. Florin, comes from Mash in southern Tyrol and was active as a priest in the 7th century in Ramosh and Terengaden. He has been remembered throughout the centuries because of his charity. The Church of St. Florin was built between 1869 and 1873. It is a neo-Gothic style according to the plans of the great master builder Friedrich von Schmidt. Other works of Friedrich von Schmidt include work on the completion of the cathedral in Cologne, the Vienna City Hall, and 125 different churches. Here you will find statues from past centuries, though some of them are copies. The organ in the back of the church dates from 1874 and was built according to the instructions of the highly esteemed composer Josef Gabriel Reinberger who was born in 1839 in Vaduz and died in Munich in 1901. The history of the Principality of Liechtenstein can be traced back a long way. It can be proved that there was a settlement here in the Neolithic Age. Since 800 BC, the area was colonized by the Rhetians. In 15 BC, it was conquered by the Romans. Christianity found its way to the province of Tracia in the 4th century, with Saint Lucius being the first to be venerated. During the mass migration, people of Germanic origins made their way from the north and drove out the Romans. Years later, the area which is the Principality of Liechtenstein today belonged to the German dukedom and was part of the country of Lower Rhaetia. Out of this emerged the two domains of Vaduz and Schellenberg. Prince Johann Adam of Liechtenstein bought the domain of Schellenberg in 1699 and the county of Vaduz in 1712. By acquiring these two counties, he was striving for a seat and a vote in the government. The actual date on which the Principality of Liechtenstein was founded was January 23, 1719. On that day, Kaiser Karl VI decreed that the counties of Vaduz and Schellenberg were to be promoted to a principality with the name Liechtenstein for his true servant, Anton Florian of Liechtenstein. One of the traditions the people of Liechtenstein are especially proud of is winemaking. At 54 acres, today's Liechtenstein vineyard area may appear quite small. In the past, however, this was often an important source of income for the farming population. Nearly the entire grape harvest is vinified and sold in Liechtenstein itself. Thanks to the natural conditions, ideal southwest-oriented hillside locations with calcareous soil and about 1,500 hours of sunshine a year, the grapes come to full ripeness. Depending on the year, the total harvest hovers around 21 to 26,000 gallons. 
Well known are Susdruk and Birli wines. Friends of a good ship will certainly find the right wine for their palate among the extensive offerings of Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein has seen great progress under recent heads of state, particularly since the beginning of the reign of Johann II in 1858. The modern development of the country is largely due to his granting of a constitution in 1862 and the liberal democratic constitution of 1921 that still holds good today. The new connections between Liechtenstein and Switzerland also developed in his time, culminating with the signing of the customs agreement in 1923. The Swiss franc has thus been the monetary unit of Liechtenstein since 1924. In 1978, Liechtenstein joined the Council of Europe. In 1990, it was accepted as a member of the United Nations, 1991 followed membership in the EFTA and in 1995 in the European Economic Area. Vaduz Castle has origins dating back to the 12th century. The keep and the buildings on the east side are the oldest surviving parts. The ground plan of the tower measures approximately 36 feet by 39 feet. On the ground floor, the walls are in places up to 12 feet thick. The original entrance was on the courtyard side, at a height of 33 feet. The foundations of the castle chapel were probably built at the height of the Middle Ages. During the Swabian War of 1499, the castle was burned down by the troops of the Swiss Confederacy. The two round bastions to the northeast and the southwest were built at the beginning of the 16th century. The northeastern round tower has a wall thickness of 15 feet. The west side was given its present form in all essentials under the rule of the Counts of Hohenems in the late 1600s. Vaduz Castle is not open to the public. Prince Franz Josef II was the first prince to take up permanent residence in Liechtenstein. He died on November 13, 1989, after a reign of 51 years. His oldest son succeeded him as Prince Hans Adam II. His Serene Highness Prince Hans Adam II was born on February 14, 1945, as the eldest son of Prince Franz Josef II von und zu Liechtenstein and Princess Gina. Hans Adam spent his youth with his parents, brothers and sisters at Vaduz Castle. He attended the primary school in Vaduz along with the local children of his age, and he also joined the Vaduz Scouts. On July 30th, 1967, hereditary prince Hans Adam and the Countess Marie Kinski von Schienitz und Tatau was married. The couple had four children. Without being presumptuous, it can be said that it is rare to find so much natural beauty in such a small area as Liechtenstein. The Liechtenstein Alpine region of alpine valleys, sunny plateaus, and rugged mountain ridges alternating with gentle, easily conquered mountain summits is host to unusual types of fauna and flora, all rising up above the fertile Rhine Valley. This has been only a taste of what Liechtenstein has to offer. Now you'll have to come visit. You can see the rest for yourself.
a visit to Brysek is well worth any traveler's time. Brysek, Germany, the gate to Europe. Welcome to the city of Brysek. In the wide riverlands of the Upper Rhine, between the Black Forest and the Vosges, the town of Brysek rises upon a steep promontory above the river, which laps about it from the west. Behind its protective walls and gates, the medieval city expanded up the slope, with the Zaringen Castle surmounting it in the north, the Water Tower in the center, and the towers of the Minster of St. Stephen in the south. Such was the view of the citadel recorded by the architect Johann Jakob Arhart in 1642. For centuries, Breisach rose like a crown above the Rhine until in 1793, the fearful bombardment by troops of the French Revolution reduced the unprepared and defenseless town to dust and ashes in only five days. On this occasion, the walls of the Minster stood firm but an assault in 1945 at the end of the Second World War caused much more serious damage. Through the efforts of the local parish community and with the aid of the Commission for Historic Monuments, the church was restored again in the 1950s to its former glory. A fountain called the Europa Brunnen, the European Fountain, it was erected in July 1962 in remembrance of the July 1950 vote by which Brysek's inhabitants declared themselves as the first European town for a united Europe. Numerous remains have come to light in various excavations. In 260 AD, the Romans erected a fortress on the southward ledge to defend their Rhine boundary against the onslaughts of the Alemannians. Its foundations were discovered in 1970 on the north side of the Minster. The course of the walls has now been marked by colored pavement. The remains of the walls reach right up to the church and probably continue below it, so that we may assume that they were partially employed to serve as foundations for the Romanesque minster. On August 30th, 369, an edict was issued here by the Emperor Valentinian, in which the name of Brissiacum is mentioned for the first time. After the withdrawal of the Romans around 400 AD, the fate of Brysek remains shrouded in obscurity until we learn of the besiegement of the fortress by Otto I in 939. In a treaty dated 1185, Henry VI and the Bishop of Basel reached a mutual agreement for furthering the expansion of the village settlement. As early as 1218, Brysek is designated as Opidum, or Walled Town, in the records. However, its municipal status was not officially constituted until the reign of Rudolf of Habsburg in 1275, when it was declared an imperial free city. In 1331, Breisick sought voluntary protection under the House of Habsburg and entered into the possession of Austria, which ruled it with brief interruptions until it was incorporated with Baden in 1805. Opposite of the cathedral, St. Stephen's Munster, Breisick's town hall is located. The original building, Breisach's mint in former times, was destroyed during the Second World War, but was rebuilt in 1953 in the original style. The coat of arms on the front shows Breisach's territorial affiliation since 1139. For 500 years, the impressive minster has withstood the ravages of time on its lofty site dominating the pleasant open country of the Upper Rhine. Closely bound up with the history of the citadel, it stands as the last witness to the glorious past of the town, so often the scene of fierce struggles. Begun in the age of the Hohenstaufen rulers, and later extended by the burghers, it represents the architecture of the Upper Rhine over a period of three centuries. The single parts combine to form a harmonious whole. The austerity of the architecture is balanced by the beauty of the interior furnishings. The cathedral, St. Stephen's Munster, with parts of Roman and of Gothic style, 
was built between the 12th and the 15th centuries. Inside, some important art treasures can be found. The richly decorated lime wood altar of the artist Hans Loy, the silver shrine of the town's patrons, dated 1496, and above all, the wall paintings of Martin Schonger from Kalmar. Schonger was the most notable painter of this region, and in the latter years of his life, a citizen of Breisach. He executed the doom on the west, south, and north walls of the Western Hall tract in the years between 1488 and his death on February 2nd, 1491. Here we experience the final phase of Gothic, unfolding to its highest, purest fruition in Schongauer's frescoes, displaying an almost Baroque magnificence in the play of forms in chancel screen and shrine. This period, the first three decades of the 16th century, torn by violent religious, social, and political upheavals, brought forth great works of art along the Upper Rhine. A street called Langerweg leads along an old fortress wall, 20 meters high, to the Rheintor, the Rhine Gate. The Rhine Bridge, north of Breisach, has existed since 1273. The Rheintor in Breisach was built in 1670 by Sebastian Vauban, the French military master builder in the time of King Louis XIV. It replaced a late medieval bridge gate from 1315. Louis XIV, his wife Marie Theresia of Spain, and some tied-up ancient Germans are portrayed on the richly decorated western façade. The gate was originally supplied with a portcullis and drawbridge. When Louis XIV solemnly celebrated his entry into Breisach on August 31, 1673, he crossed the Rhine marching over the bridge, entering the town through this representative town gate. In the 18th century, Rheintor was used as a military hospital. In the 19th, it was changed into a block of flats, with part of it housing a wallpaper factory. In 1893, it became a military barracks once more. A town museum, the Kaiserstuhl Museum, used these rooms as showrooms between 1927 and 39. Although most of its exhibits were destroyed in the Second World War, some were saved and once again can be seen in the museum. The renovation of the gate into a new museum began in 1984, and the museum was open to the public on the 25th of October, 1991. Johann Gottfried Tula, one of Baden's most famous engineers, was born in Karlsruhe in 1770. Tula did the basic theoretical research for the regulation of the course of the Rhine River. This regulation intended to secure the lower areas along the Rhine from flooding and gain new land for agricultural cultivation. In 1874, a monument was raised to honor the Tamer of the Wild Rhine, as Tula was called. This tower stands on the old castle area of Breisach. A street Radbrunnen Ali leads to a tower named Radbrunnen, or Wheel Well. In the past, the well, going right through the cathedral hill to the level of the river Rhine, provided the population with fresh water, especially during the various sieges the town had to endure. Today, concerts and exhibitions take place in the Radbrunnen, and the building is also used during Carnival, which is an important event in town. <laughs> An open-air theater is located just one block from the Kapuzner Garden Hotel and Restaurant. Every year, approximately 12,000 visitors come here to see classical plays and plays for children on special occasions. Here you can see performances of amateur actors from mid-June until mid-September. In 1999, the open-air theater celebrated its 75th birthday.
exquisite restaurants as well as cozy inns invite visitors to get a taste of the famous Alsacian Badonian cuisine of the region. Regional wines and sparkling wines can be tasted during a visit to one of Europe's largest wineries or to one of the two sparkling wine cellars to be found in Breisach. We hope you've enjoyed this view of Breisach, the gate to Europe. And on your next trip, perhaps you too will use Breisach as your gate to travel throughout Europe.